Hello again, everybody. What I'd like to talk about today is something a little bit different than what we've talked about in the past. Usually my presentations are about computing new variables or calculating values or running some preliminary analyses. But today I'm going to be talking about working with dates. And one of the great things about SPSS is it has a lot of different functionality to help us with working with different types of data. And one type of data we might be interested in working with is date data. And whether or not we're talking about individuals who were juveniles, so we need to calculate out how old they were when they committed a crime, or if we're even talking about how long since a certain point in time, we need to be able to have an accurate date variable. And note that I specifically said they're variable, a single variable. What that means is that we need to find a way to bring together multiple pieces of information, which is going to be the month, day, and year, in a way that SPSS is going to recognize that they are, in fact, a date value, that these three pieces of information correspond to a certain thing. Now, the nice thing about this example is that SPSS has built-in functionality to do exactly what it is we're talking about, which is to have a single variable that is going to encompass all these pieces of information. By the way, it can be even more complex than that. The program will even allow us to take into account time on top of date. But for the point of this example, I'm just going to focus in on date. So on the screen, you can see we've just got some simple sample data that I put together. We have month, we have day, and we have year. And our goal is going to be to create a single variable instead of three different variables to represent that date. And it's going to be important for us to think about this because very often, by the way, we we see this all the time, right? You'll see 11 uh, backside 12 backside 2019, right? And I would say, okay, so it's November 12th, 2019. We do this all the time as a single value. But what we want to do is make sure that the program, that SPSS, understands that as being meaningful. We could enter it as a simple string value, but at the end of the day, the program's not going to know how to interpret that. So first off, we can see we've got the three pieces of information already reported here. If I switch over the variable view, you can see that all three of these are numeric in nature. Now, we shouldn't always assume that. We should always run uh, frequencies on it just to be sure that we don't have any sort of weird uh, aspect to the data that maybe something's been entered with a letter or you know instead of someone putting the second as a as a number two they've instead put two and d right to represent second well make sure we don't have issues with that and we don't hear and certainly we can see we don't hear and now what we're going to do is we're going to actually use a compute command to create a single date variable so i'm going to go up to transform and go compute variable and you see, as always, with compute, we've got a, dar a target variable. And I'm going to simply type in here date. And now, when you go over here on the right-hand side, we're going to just use the function group to scroll down until we see one called date creation. And notice when I highlighted this, it didn't put anything in my numeric expression. Instead, by clicking this, I've gotten a series of examples here of different forms or different functions built into SPSS. Now, I'm going to treat this as sort of a day, month, year variable, right? I could also do month, day, year, and by clicking here, and maybe actually let's do that because I think that for a lot of the folks watching this, this is going to be the one we're a little bit more familiar with. And so if I double click this, you can see right up here at the top under numeric expression, it's moved a command over that we didn't really have access to until we click this, which simply says date.mdy. Now, we don't change any of that. And it has three question marks. Each one of those question marks are telling you that they need to be replaced with a variable. Now, paying particular attention here, because the order is important, month, day, year. I'm going to click each of my variables over into the appropriate, or to replace the appropriate question mark. Now, I'm going to simply click month here, and you can see the first question mark has been replaced with my variable month. I'm going to click day, and my second question mark has been replaced with day. And then finally, the third one, I'm going to replace with year. And it's that simple. And if I say OK here, you're going to see, again, our syntax compute date 
equals day month uh, day excuse me month day year the variable names of month day year and of course date was the name that we gave the new variable now I come over here and be prepared because this isn't going to look like what we think if I go over to the data view you see something kind of extraordinary in the sense that it makes not a lick of sense that is the date value now what we understand as date and what the software understands as date is going to be very different. This is how the software represents date as this extended value. Now, I'm not going to go in. We can actually pull it apart if we really wanted to. I don't think it's necessary to do this in terms of the calculation. It's basically counting days since a given point in time. Again, we don't need to worry about that here. But what we can tell the program is to represent this in a way that makes more sense to us. So let's go back to variable view. And again, date is listed here as numeric. It is technically numeric because it was created from three numeric variables, but we don't want it to be represented as numeric. We want it to be represented as a date value. So I'm going to click here. And when I do, you see we get the three dots here, which tell us that we've got some options. And I'm going to click on that. And as you get to the variable type, in the past, we haven't had to do much with this. But you can see we've got numeric, comma, dot, scientific notation, and sure enough, date. Now, the two that we generally use in a program like SPSS are going to be numeric and string. But at times, something like date is going to be helpful for us. Now, at this point, the program wants to know how we want it represented. Now, we could leave it as the default. But, you know, I actually like the idea of having sort of that traditional two digit for month, two digit for day, four digit for year, and then the backslash is separating it out. So I'm going to simply select that. And again, by the way, the option here isn't important. It's just how it's going to be represented to us in the column. And I'm going to say OK. And now notice all that's changed is date is now a type. The type of variable is date. If I go back to my data view, Lo and behold, we can actually see exactly what our goal was, which was the month, the day, and the year being represented as a single variable. Now, the other thing here, and I don't want to go too far afield about this, is that we may run into a situation where just the opposite occurs. Maybe we've got date listed as a, a single variable, and instead we want to pull it apart. Again, if we really wanted to, we could go to transform. We could go to compute. I'm going to reset this to clear it all up. And you can see now, by the way, our date variable here is uh, its own variable because we've already created it. And let's say I want to extract from that variable, that date variable, just the year. So I'm going to say year is my new variable. Now I got to be careful here because the software is going to tell me I actually have a year variable. So I'm going to say year underscore new. And this time, instead of date creation, there's something called date extraction. And again, when I do that, I get a whole bunch of options below. And you can look through these. The logic behind them is all the same. But for this case, I'm simply going to say extract date year. I'll double click that. Now, notice last time when we created the variable, it wanted three different variables to create the new variable of date. Well, in this case, Date is a single variable. So in order to create or extract year from it, we just need to tell it the date variable. So I'm going to double click date here. Now, by the way, yes, I understand I'm creating a new variable, which is going to be the same as my old variable date. But what I'm suggesting to you is that we could run into a situation where we don't have those individual variables and we may want to pull them apart. So for, ex for example, a situation like that, this becomes a useful tool. So I'm going to say extract date year, put date in there, and I'm simply going to say OK. Once again, our syntax is being reported in our output file. I'm going to minimize this. And you can see we've got a brand new year variable. Now, because it's treating it as numeric, it's given us two decimal places. If I want, I can go back to variable view. I can turn those off. And lo and behold, they are listed out. Now, the compute command allows me then to easily move back and forth between these types of variables 
if that's necessary. And by the way, if I wanted to double check it, if I wanted to say, okay, maybe I couldn't just observe this with the naked eye. What if I'm concerned that the program is doing something different or it's calculating the date out in an odd way? I can always actually calculate a variable to tell me what the difference between year of the original and the year in the new. And again, I could use uh, the compute command for something like this. I could say transform, compute variable. I'm going to reset this and I'm going to say year difference. I'm going to say year minus the new year or year underscore new, excuse me. If I say okay, again, my syntax is shown here. And of course, the values are all equal to zero because there is no difference between them. But now I can double check that. Also, by the way, if I've got thousands of, thousands of cases, I wouldn't just eyeball it. I would calculate this out and then I'd go to my analyze descriptive statistics frequencies and I'd run a frequency distribution on the year diff variable to be sure that there's nothing but zeros in there. All right, I know this is a little bit of an odd one in some ways, but again, working with date variables, you might find this an easy way to both create and extract information from them. As always, have a very pleasant day.